Hello everyone. This video we are going to attempt to draw a teapot using cr cross hatching. And I'm going to walk you step by step through this. Uh, you want to make the body of the teapot it's circular, approximately five inches by five inches. Um, you can draw your circle if you'd like. Um, there's one technique. I'm using a, a 2B pencil. Uh, I'm just going to very lightly do concentric kind of curve spiral until I think I've reached five inches in diameter. So very light lines. And that's, that looks pretty good right there. That's about five inches. See how light that line is? And if I'm not happy with the symmetry of this, I can go back in and add or remove, shape the, the circle to my liking. And if your uh, body of your teapot is not perfectly circular, who cares? No big deal. Because the goal here is to apply cross hatching to a complex curved surface. If you haven't seen the uh, the video on spheres, I would suggest watching that with cross hatching before you get to this. This side looks really lumpy on the screen. It is lumpy, so let me uh, take away a little bit of that lumpiness here. And, and by starting off with light lines, it's easier to kind of fix in the beginning. That's better. Just add a little bit more down here. All right. <clears throat> There's the body of the teapot. So first we're going to draw the shape of the parts of the teapot. The next part I want to create is, let's see, the opening at the top. So I'm going to create an oval. And then I'm going to drop the sides of the oval with straight lines and connect it to the teapot. See that? Okay. You can stop the video and rewind. Now you see this line right here, that kind of that lip, that curve of the ellipse on the bottom. I'm going to mimic that. So now there's the opening, and then you have the uh, the uh, the side of the opening at the top of the teapot. And the very bottom of this teapot, you see this curve right here? I'm going to leave that curve alone, but we're going to drop two short lines here. And then we're going to follow along the curvature of the bottom of the pot. So that's the, the, the foot or the stand of the, uh, the teapot. Okay. Next step, we're going to do the teapot opening. Okay, let's see here. Um, let's see how do, what, what does that look like? So I'm going to start off with a short little. You know what? I'm sorry. Let me go backward here. I'm going to start off with a line, and this line establishes how the opening of the teapot is connected to the body of the teapot. So now I can create the base with, a, with an oval. And then I'm going to create another oval at the top here. There's another oval. It's smaller than this ellipse here, how it's connected to the body of the pot. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect this to the side of the opening to the base. There we go. There's our opening, and your your opening could be. Gosh, let me do that one more time. <laughs> I'm actually going to curve this line a little bit. There we go. And then I'm going to create my oval. So that's where the oval is, larger and then narrower, smaller at the top, resting at the top. So there's the opening, and I like that curve because it gives it a little more gracefulness, a little bit more 
So it's wider as it connects. Kind of curves down. There we go. All right, next we're going to do the handle. And the handle looks like one kind of big old ear. So I'm just going to attach the handle with a line to start off with. There's the large part, and it comes down, and it connects. There you go. It's like a, like a mouse ear. Now, it's right now still a line. So what I want to do is I want to give it thickness, a shape, by creating another echoing line. There we go. There's our handle right there. There's the, the negative space, the space in between, and here's the positive space of the handle itself. Okay. Next, I'm going to create a large oval. Okay, and this is, um, uh, you know what? I might hold off on the shadow of this, this pot for later. Okay, so I want you to put a little circle on the top left. Uh, and we're going to make a little sun icon. And that shows us this is where the light is shining onto this pot. So that means uh, the left side of the pot, this side is lighter and this side is darker. So this will be darker and this will be lighter. I'm going to create some shapes here. <clears throat> so when you see the corresponding example in the module, uh, I'm going to draw out some shapes here. Almost in, a, in a way, I'm creating a coloring book for my cross-hatching. So there's a shadow area here. There's a highlight area here. This is a dark area right here. This is a middle value here. There's a shadow area right here shadow area here, highlight area, it's a darker area here, so these shapes will have uh, uh, different darknesses of crosshatch and this area will be lighter, this will be lighter this will be lighter up here. There's shadow within the teapot. There's a highlight here, at the top of the handle, and it gets darker on the bottom of the handle. And there's a little bit of reflected light on the right side. So let's start off with that first, okay? So I'm going to kind of mimic the example that we see in the, uh, the module upload. <clears throat> Let me just start off from the top left to the right so inside of this handle here it's darker okay so and you notice that's at a 45 degree angle so let's just create 45 degree angle for the shadow there's the shadow this top portion here where it connects to the body of the that goes at a 45 degree angle the opposite direction so you can just follow along and mimic my angles. If you want to use your own angles, that's fine, different angles. And overall, these lines are fairly straight. They're not super curved. Okay. Uh, the outline of the pencil, I'm going to make it darker so we can see it a little bit easier. There we go. take my time <clears throat> okay so there's some hatch lines not so much crossed now there is a little bit darker area right here and I'm, that's where I'm going to introduce some cross hatching which is it goes in the opposite direction so I'm going to layer those lines there you go darken that line this shape is a shadow. It's like a little bit darker gray. So what I'm going to do is use these lines first. 
and the closer they are, the darker it looks. And then I'm going to go the opposite, not opposite direction, but in a different direction, cross them over, and that'll make it even look darker. So in the beginning, we defined our shapes. Here's that top of that teapot. We can outline it. <clears throat> okay, and oh, let's do that. Outline that shape too. So we have one, two, three, four shapes here. So in this shape right here, we're going to go at a 45 degree angle, that lip, and I'm going to slowly move it across. There we go. And that ellipse in the next to it, I'm going to draw into that as well. But I want to make this one darker, so I'm going to add more lines. So you notice as I add lines, it makes it look darker. Um, on the side of the top of this, there's this shadow shape right here. I'm going to create that shape, and that will give me some shadows for the right side to give it contrast to the light area that I, I'm not going to touch. I'm going to leave that alone. This is kind of a complex drawing right here. Just, just try your best. If you want to simplify it a little bit, no problem. Uh, if you want to do a little bit of variation, that's fine. I think the key here is just have fun and experiment by putting in different levels of light and dark with your cross hatching. So here's that large dark shape, kind of a paisley kind of shape right here. So I'm going to use cross-hatch this area. By having these large dark shapes, it helps to really bring out the, give it, give your object almost like the illusion of weight, of mass. It's heavy. There's a light area and a dark area. It's easier for the viewer to see. You can use a ruler if you want. I, I'm just going to go hand do it. I kind of like the subtle waving lines and the inconsistencies here and there. My overall goal is to use a variety of different cross hatching and to try my best to mimic the example. And of course, if you would try this with any other shape or form, you can look up online different cross hatch examples of uh, pots, teapots. Or you can find photographs of teapots and try to take what you've learned, that formula of light and dark overlapping shapes and forms to make your imagery stand out. And better yet, maybe take your own photography of objects or simple shapes and forms from your kitchen or your house to practice these uh, techniques. That's how you improve and become better. So this is darker. Uh, near the handle there's another dark area so I'm going to make sure this is darker. So I'm, I'm playing with light and dark. It's not exactly like the illustration. It's kind of going off on its own but I am keeping the formula of darker areas and lighter areas. These shapes are kind of curving around the pot. And uh, oh, this is kind of cool. I'm gonna, I like the uh, example. They use thicker lines to give it variety. That's pretty cool. Look at that. I'm using a Sharpie. You could, you could do this with a pencil or charcoal if you'd like or India ink. The key is just making sure that you don't get rid of the lines, but you layer the lines and to give it variety and helps to define the different shapes on your pot. 
it's not perfectly smooth yet you know we're we're not there yet but this is an example of using straight or curved lines to indicate light dark transitions so I'm gonna notice how that makes that shadow area different okay so changing the orientation the the angle of your shape the way you fill in the shape with different combinations of light and dark lines different angles our brain picks it up and sees it as a different space, a different area. All right, so we have this negative space here. How do we bring out the negative space here? So we have to go into the area around it to make it stand out. So let's go with, I'm going to fill in every space around that circle with this rhythm of line. And when I overlap, it connects to that highlight. I'm going to stop. It's like a boundary. I don't want to get rid of that boundary. I want to and keep this rhythm of line consistent. And I want to make this not as, how do you say, um, dark as this area on the right side. I want to keep it fairly light. nice rhythm of lines. They're all going the same direction, but notice how as I, as I overlap that highlight, I leave it alone because that indicates the highlight, the reflection off of this teapot. It's not photographic. It's not super realistic, but we are indicating with the crosshatch lights and darks with these marks. Okay, let's uh, let's continue on in this little area right here. But I'm going to change this little piece. Uh, I want to make it a little bit darker, so I'm going to go opposite direction. There we go. Let's stop and just kind of before we just draw endlessly, mindlessly, just kind of let's reflect on this. I think it's so far so good as a demonstration. Um, now on the bottom here, I would like to go from dark. So I'm gonna go dark lines. And as I move to the left, I'm going to increase the amount of space between the lines. So what does that do? That makes it look like this is shadow. And it turns towards the light. How's that look? Now I want to make the base a little heavier, so I'm going to just do these small little zigzaggy lines to make it really dark on the bottom. Nice. Okay, so I'm going to outline the handle. And you know, look at the various shapes, the curves within this handle. So the handle on top, just to remind you, it's lighter. And that's the highlight. This is the shadow showing its underneath shadow. The top part of the handle is blocking out the view of the lower part of the handle. See that? Look at that nice contrast of bottom of the handle obscured and then the highlight this area right here. And in the bottom here, there's some shadow, so we're gonna put some shadow here. And we have kind of like reflected light bouncing off the surface of the paper into the, the pot, so this area is gonna remain a little bit lighter. This little, this little edge of highlight right here. I think, uh, let's see, I think the basics are here, okay? Um, let's see, is there, I think we have the basic. This is a good stopping point. 
of this. Now, if I want to take it further, I can just kind of uh, play around with this. I can have some more fun. So I want to add some more curve lines to show that on the base of the, the spout, it's a little bit darker. Make this, so I'm just kind of having fun and going with adding some more contrast here and there, tidying up some of the lines. I like this style of bolding, making the outside line a little bit thicker. There you go. Just a few more minutes here. Pace yourself. Uh, take what time you need. Uh, I would be careful of spending too much time on these exercises. Um, you have to pace yourself and get done what you can in class and outside of class. You can do it in one session or you can work on it like 10 minutes here, 10 minutes there whatever your preference. So I'm just kind of winging it, just going off using my own imagination. I want to make this area definitely darker. Because again, this side is in shadow, this area. And notice the overall lightness of this area. I hope that comes through in the, the video. Now, I didn't add the uh, shadow underneath. That's extra um, if you'd like to give it a shot. So let me show you with the shadow underneath. I'm going to create an oval-like shape. Okay, So there's an oval there. There's an oval right here. There's a, a large shape here in the shadow. And there's uh, another shape here. So I have these broken down into zones. One two, three, four, five zones. And I'm going to fill them up with different varieties of, of cross hatch lines or just hatch lines. So here's an example. I'm going to create lines going in this direction, fairly straight, flat on the surface of this table. And then on the, this little piece right here, I'm going to make it a little bit darker. Creates drama, creates a dynamic kind of motion. This uh, shadow also helps to establish the, uh, the illusion of a flat surface as well. What's nice about these videos, you can repeat them, you can look at them again, slow down, speed them up, uh, go to the parts you're interested in uh, accomplishing for yourself. What do you think? Do you guys like these videos? Are they helpful? Gosh, there's so many different options you can use, but be creative. Come up with some of your own types of lines. And it's, uh, it takes patience. So let me try this here. I'm going to try a kind of a quick line. It's kind of a scribbly line. Look at that. So very sweeping left to right to fill up that shape. Look at that. Just kind of organic kind of sweeping motion. Now this one I'm going to use, let's see, maybe if I use another pencil. I hold the pencil. So this is the outside of the the shadow, so I'm, go I'm going to guess it's going to be a little bit lighter, fuzzier, moving away from the actual object. You might want to tape down your uh, your paper temporarily. I like blue painter's tape. See how loose and free I'm drawing? I'm not obsessing over each different line.
take a look at that shadow. Uh, that shadow's not... Hmm, what does that shadow need? What I'd like to do is to make the shadow more distinct from the pot itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back over this whole shape with a 45 degree angle, the whole thing. And what that helps, what that's going to do is going to help unify the shadow. And I'm just, I want to see if that actually helps to make it different than the teapot itself. I, f I feel like it's just blending into the shape of the teapot. They're, they're competing for my attention. And I want to make the teapot the most interesting shape and form. And the shadow maybe should be the secondary focal point or area of interest. So let's see if that works. Let's see if we calm this area down and bring it together a little bit. Gosh, uh, breathing is important. Make sure you take regular breaths and uh, I notice I'm holding the pen kind of tight so relax your hand make sure you're sitting upright a little bit more now this artwork looks different it's gonna look different on camera versus in real life you know, that's uh, it's just it is what it is. I just want you to realize that it's uh, some distortion happens when you're capturing media, different using different cameras and technology. You tell me, is this helping or hurting the shadow here? That's kind of uh, your opinion, your subjective kind of. Overall, I'm really happy with this demo. I'm, I like the uh, starting with the shapes, the process from the beginning to the towards the end. Uh, I have to stop here and take a look at this to to judge it. What's valuable is spending the time and uh, giving it a shot. You know, like uh, don't be afraid of whether it turns out perfect or not you just give me your best shot it's work in progress okay let me stop here take a look at that again oh much better uh, I'm really happy with that the shadow is shadow and the pot is it stands out and it, it's hold it holds its own <clears throat> uh, let's see I'm gonna finish out with maybe a line in the background to establish the table surface. It's resting on a flat plane, so I'm just doing a thick line here. Kind of a symbol, like a mental little symbol for us to say, hey, that's the edge of the table or the, the floor. And here's our little sun icon or light icon, whatever the light source is. Lighter here, transitions to darker areas. Notice the variety of shapes, the variety of cross hatching. Um, I hope you enjoyed that demo. All right, let's let's stop it right there.